Diane Colhane, and I want to show you today how to work with negative and positive space. And we're going to use two simple steps to create a dynamic painting um, that I'll, I will show you that will end up looking like this. Okay, so the positive space is the object itself. It's something that you can touch, such as this vase and these flowers. And the negative space is the air space around it. It's, it actually becomes a shape, and I think it's more interesting to focus on that sometimes rather than the object itself. So the negative space, which is the air space, is so full of possibilities. It supports everything else, and it is just as important as the object itself, if not more important, because you're inventing it. The object is already invented. It's already a concrete thing that you're looking at, but it actually it moves every time the flower moves, or the car is moving, or the bicycle's moving, and that is very exciting to discover. So here's the recipe for success for everyone. You're going to use paint, you can use acrylics, which I'm going to use, watercolor or gouache. Um, use a flat surface such as a canvas or a board or just paper itself. We're going to start off with warm colors which are orange and red and, and yellow and then we're going to um, cover the surface and then we're going to let it dry and then we're going to come back with cool colors and we're going to paint the negative space around the object which is the positive space. Okay so now I'm going to get out my paints and I have a sheet of paper that I keep my paints on and I'm going to put a little bit of white and I have some Indian yellow and what I did in my studio I just grabbed warm colors and you can use any combination of a warm colors yellows, reds, oranges and this is a quinacridone nickel and, and it's a gold, and it's, it's a little bit orange, um, but it's brown next to orange. And um, Elizabeth Crimson, which is red, and Hansa Yellow. So any flat surface will do. I have a wood board and, and a brush. So I just randomly apply the colors all around. The yellow and I can mix them. I like it kind of spotted and then I can surprise myself as far as the positive shape and what that's going to look like. And sometimes I just apply it right on the surface. So, ta-da! That's it for the first step, and we'll let that dry. So, now that this is all dry, we're going to add the darker color on top. So. I'm going to use a dioxazine purple and an ultramarine blue. So any dark colors, if you have black, if you have Payne's gray, any blue is good. Um, I'm using two colors just to sort of make it just a little bit more dynamic. So now, before I apply the dark color in the airspace, I'm going to sketch out you don't have to, but I'm just going to briefly sort of lay down something that I can see a vase. I do have a vase and flowers next to me, and then some flowers. I didn't put a hard pencil line down, but I just kind of mapped it out in my mind so that then the pencil line doesn't show. I'm going to use a smaller brush, and this is the fun part. So 
apply, you want to apply it pretty thick. And just travel around. My face is going to come on like this. So I'm just using my imagination. I, I've got my stems, which is the positive space. I've got these flowers coming up here. So, and there's no right or wrong to this. It's kind of an organic thing that for me just happens. I, I just, just do it. And, um, <laughs> and I, I just love to watch the paint go on the board. It's just so beautiful. Actually, going to make these So then, once I have the shape filled in, I can do a little bit more detailed from the outside edge, which is really sort of the contour of the flower. So I've just shown you two simple techniques that quickly get the negative space and the positive space working together. And I use this technique all the time when I'm painting, when I'm building. What's the connection between that shape and what's behind it? So I think it'll be a really us useful tool for you. Make a lot of these, have fun with these, and also not just um, one big shape. I have one more that I want to show you. So more complex compositions com can come from this technique. So use smaller brushes, use lots of color, and um, just get started and have lots of fun.